I wanted to be wealthy by helping people doing what I love. That's a hard question to answer. And that's, was the, that was the question I posed on how to create Burn Bootcamp in the first place. Uh, you couple that, uh, layer on top of that, the way I was treated as a personal trainer was completely different than, I, uh, than, I, than the way I was treated on my sports teams, where it's championship culture, one for all, all for one. We're going to win. We need you. You're accountable. You can't blame anybody else. If you screw up, you've got to have personal accountability. This was like, what are you going to do for the company? Right? Oh, you did a lot? Good. Not good enough. Come back to me and I'll take you seriously if you're still here in a year. It was like that type of stuff, which you don't want to talk to me that way because that's the way my father talked to me. And I will absolutely wreck shit. Right? Like, so I did exactly the opposite of what this guy said, became this big nuisance. But at the same time, I'm doing innovative stuff right in front of them. And they didn't like that too much. So I ended up, uh, Morgan got the job promotion. I followed her. That's sugar mama. She paying for my cell phone bill. So I was an imbecile to not follow her. Um, and so I did it. She was either going to move to Charlotte or Dallas. She chose Charlotte. I moved up, started just knocking on doors of businesses. Hey, I'm the newest personal trainer around town. I'm starting this parking lot gym. Would you like to come work out with me at 5 a.m. in the morning when it's dark in a parking lot? Oh, by the way, here's a t-shirt. Right? I felt like such a compelling offer. Yeah. Was such a compelling offer for people. Over and over and over for 90 days, I just stomped the grounds of this area. Started in a parking lot, did four more par parking lots. Nobody would give us a lease because we were 24-year-old kids with no financial history. And uh, so five parking lot gyms later, we've got about 1,000 members. I look down at my bank account without even having a brick and mortar yet. And I'm like, there's, 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 there's two commas there. And we're scared. We're nervous. We're like imposter syndrome. Like, do we deserve this? I'm sure you've gone through, and all, I think all successful people do at some point. They say like, okay, what's next now that I achieved this thing? And I did, trust me, doesn't fall on me lightly that so many people who are incredibly talented, incredibly smart, who have incredible ideas, who work just as hard, do all the things, there is, and they don't pop on their first business. They might be on the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh time and fail seven times over. I'm just, I, I don't know what it is, Jeff. I don't necessarily believe in luck. I'm not a luck guy. I don't think like luck is a thing, but there's some element. Maybe it's, maybe it's grace. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the word is. I'm, Maybe it is luck. I don't know. I'm still trying to reconcile that one. But for whatever reason, I'm sitting here at 27 and I'm a millionaire in cash. Not just like by like net worth hyperbole, like in cash. Okay, what do we do next, right? So we flip all of the gyms uh, into brick and mortars. That's the next step, okay? I'm having a lot of trouble doing this. A lot of trouble. Not enough financial. I can show people cash and they're like, no. Thank you. I need history. You've never had a lease yeah. before. No, thank you. I go and I get a, I get a tip from one of my members who there's a building that's about to go on the market. Who's owned by the person she works for, who has a partnership with a franchisor in the area who I'd like you to meet with them. So I show up to 311 Gilead road mm -hmm. and I walk in and I probably come right off the back of a training, a camp or something. So I got gym shorts and a gym shirt on. And I remember seeing this like cool dude, like, please don't be offended by this. He's got salt and pepper in his beard. He's got nice glasses on. Like he's like, looks good, tall, handsome, like super successful. And I'm like, this guy's like pretty cool. I start talking to you. And then you actually look at me. I don't know if you remember this. I wrote about this in my book, Stop Starting Over. You have a line in there. And I never forget this the rest of my life. You said, dude, this is exactly what you said. You said, dude. Have you ever heard of franchising? You should franchise this concept. This thing is sexy. That's what you told me. And I knew what franchising was, but I thought it was just like fast food, right? I thought it was fast food and then like sports teams could be like, a, you could have an NFL franchise or whatever. I didn't realize that there, this was a vehicle that we could use to grow our business. We believed in brand equity, right? We believed in the power of the logo, but we didn't know the vehicle. And so I met you and... We didn't talk about franchising for the rest of the time. I was just like, yeah, yeah, I know about it. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, I kind of don't know. And you probably could tell that I had no idea what I was talking about. But you said, you looked at Morgan and I, and you said, hey, you're not qualified. 
I know why people are turning you down, but I see something in you that is special. And plus I want to rent this place out. So I'll roll the dice on you guys. Deal's done. How much can you afford? 